Hi there, I'm Lean, a solutions marketer at NI focusing on production test. And today, I'm here to show you a short demo of an electronics functional test system in action. If you care about optimizing your test practices across an NPI process or a new product introduction process by testing faster, reusing code and test assets, integrating different programming languages across teams, and acquiring and analyzing test system data, I think you'll enjoy this demo. So here we have four units under tests. They're really just generic electronics boards that we're using to represent um, any green board you might need to test. We're running three tests on each today using this PXI system here. We have a FET characterization using the SMU for both measuring and sourcing. We have a filter test uh, using the waveform generator and an oscilloscope. And we have a diode test that's using the DMM. We also have a matrix switch to help us route between all of these tests, allowing us to test the four units in parallel rather than having extra instruments for each test. And here what I have running, let me start this first one, uh, in test stand is an auto-scheduled test sequence. Let's go. Basically, something you'd want to have running on your manufacturing floor. If you're not familiar with test stand, it's a ready test executive for building test sequences with code from LabVIEW, Python, C, or .NET. It offers an architecture that makes modifying and adding test steps significantly easier, keeping your test system scalable and flexible. It also facilitates parallel testing, which we're seeing right here, and helps you avoid the pain of maintaining an in-house built test architecture. So to better visualize what just happened here, uh, let me run the test again, and I'll open up the profile execution so we can see it better. So I'm gonna go for next batch. And here you could put in serial numbers if you want to. I'm just gonna keep them blank. And then I've got a profile execution. Let me clear it so it starts from scratch. So basically what we're looking at right here is test and doing the resource management. It's basically telling uh, managing which resource goes where. So SMU, this is the test that you're doing now on this specific unit. Uh, scope and waveform generator, this is where you're going. So this resource management, this auto scheduling, usually could take 100 hours of actual programming. Um, here, I'm gonna stick around here for a second so we can look at it. So it could take hundreds of hours to code. And I mean, parallel test makes sense why wouldn't we want to test in parallel and auto schedule thing? It helps us test faster with less equipment, but it's usually very difficult to do. Here in test stand, it's a built-in functionality. So it saves you all of that development time. So if we focus a little bit, let's focus on the SMU, for example, right here, one of the instruments. We can see that when it's being used by uh, socket two, it's blocked and is not being used in any of the other sockets. As soon as it's done, it's assigned back to socket one. So this resource management for auto scheduling, this is what's built in in test stand and what helps you uh, decrease your development time. So here basically we've seen our demo doing its job. Let's stop it for now. Next batch and stop. We've seen, uh, we've seen this tester doing parallel test on four different units under test. But what's really cool and what I wanna show you a little bit more of is the software workflow that's uh, behind all of this. So let me, first of all, get rid of all of these reports, which you can customize, are automatically created by test stand, but you can customize and show you these specific, we, we talked about the three tests. There is the LED test, the filter test, I'm highlighting them here, and the FET test. These three tests have been packaged. So there are these custom measurement plugins that have been packaged and have been reused across different um, programs. And I'll show you how. So if I open up Instrument Studio right now, right here, you're gonna see a FET characterization, a filter, and a diode. These are the same exact three tests. So these plugins are shareable across different team members, they're shareable across different parts of your um, product design process from validation to production. And let's run it very quickly and show you, show you it in action. So if I'm using Instrument Studio just to interact or manually take a test, I'm gonna use the switch executive first. 
because as you remember, as you recall, we're using a switch matrix to route the different tests. I'm going to run a simple test. Let's run the white LED. I'm going to connect it. And it's connected. Here we go. Go to the diet test. And it's passing. So, and that's what we expect it to do. So what I did right now is this diode test, I'm going to open up test stand again, is this exact same one right here, the white LED test. So basically, like I said, that seamless interaction between if you're doing validation and you need some more manual or interactive measurements versus eventually it's ready, it's ready to go in the test stand in the manufacturing floor, we can share that same exact one. And what's really cool about this, this is, this is some powerful stuff. Each of these is written in a different language. So the diode test right here, we've actually written with Python. We've got the source code right here. Versus the filter test, for example, we've written that in LabVIEW, and I've got the source code over here. So the fact that we have these different um, measurement plugins that have been written in different languages, so maybe different people in the team prefer different languages, or across different teams, they have different, they've standardized on different languages. Regardless of what language, we're able to interact and access all of these plugins in the same environment. And this powerful new feature with these plugins is possible because of Instrument Studio Pro. Now, like I mentioned before, the seamless uh, link between validation and production We've already seen how these same tests are being reused, but let me show you one more cool thing. Let's say you're validating and you decide, I actually need, I'm gonna make a small change for now. I actually need more samples. I need 110 samples. Whoa, that was a thousand. <laughs> Let's change it back to 110 samples instead of 100. I can now copy this measurement configuration and then go into test stand go into the filter test, and down here you see the step settings, I can paste this measurement configuration and I just changed it. So that link exists even with, you know, as simple as a copy and paste and some clicks of the buttons. One more cool thing I want to show you is that this link continues to exist even when the test sequence is running. So let's say your test has been running, something is off, something goes wrong, Ideally, you don't want the resources to be blocked. Ideally, what you want to do is, if something's happening in the filter test, I want to be able to go see the actual raw data from the filter test itself and maybe even from the instruments. And because of Instrument Studio Pro, we're able to do that. So to simulate a stopping, I'm going to add a breakpoint right here. And just to make this so we don't have to run through four whole units, I'm going to change this so that it only runs through one. And I'm going to run the sequence. I'm not going to save it for now. Let's keep it at the 100 <laughs> samples. So let's go. You'll see test stand now is, gonna, is going to go step by step through all of these until it reaches, oh, sorry, my bad. I forgot to close the session on the switch executive right here. So let's disconnect everything, close the session. The switch executive was blocked by Instrument Studio. So let's try this again. There we go. So it ran through all of these steps, reached the filter test, and stopped. So we have a breakpoint we've asked it to stop. I'm going to now go and open the measurement in Instrument Studio. It's going to open up that same filter test that we've stopped at. Now, before I continue running, I also want to see the raw instrument data. I want to see what the scope is seeing at the same time. So we can here open up the scope on the side. Now I'm going to go back into test stand, ask it to resume, and quickly go back to Instrument Studio. See, we're seeing that raw instrument data on the scope. It's going to take a little bit longer. The filter test, there we go. The test ended and we have uh, we have the information. So we have two layers of information here that help us debug and monitor uh, our test sequence as we go along. The first layer being the test and the second layer being on the instrument level. So one last thing I'd like to quickly talk about is data management and analysis. You can customize test and reports to share results and the data on the actual devices on, under test. But if you're looking to understand how your actual tests are performing, not just how the DUTs are performing, 
This system also hooks up into asset and data management programs like SystemLink. For example, here, we're using SystemLink server, so you can monitor and manage the system from anywhere, deploy new versions of the tests remotely, and we've even created a task that gets triggered whenever this test runs to create a custom report right here uh, that we've written in Jupyter and Python. So we've seen an auto-scheduled sequence running. We've shown how we can debug and monitor our test as it's running. And we've highlighted the reuse of code and the interoperability with other programming languages. We've also seen the potential of data analysis across all your test stands. A test architecture like this can save you development time, keep you flexible and able to adapt to changing requirements without compromising on quality or throughput. Reach out to us to build your custom test system today. In the following videos in this series, I'll be digging deeper into each part of the test workflow that I demoed here. Watch them today to learn how you can build your custom test system too. Thanks.